of better technology through scientific research. Where are you going to do the research? Uh, on the quality of the uh, makeup. Where? What, what part of the world are you going to do the research? Uh, just in the uh, science center. Science center in the headquarters or in the local markets? So what is L'Oreal doing at the moment? Where are they doing their research? We saw in the case. Uh, on the internet. For their scientific research. Improving quality of product. Where are they doing that? In their headquarters or in the local market? The local markets, right? So we should do that in the, continue to do that in the local markets so we can... We saw an example of some research they did in India. They uh, <coughs> made a new product in India for Asian men and then they were able to use this product across Asia. So we can do that kind of research in the local markets then links to our problem which is we want to make our product more localized even though we're a big company. Right? Uh, Song Ga Hui. Song Sha Hi. English name is different in Korean. Can you tell me some action plan? For Loria. They can launch a uh, fashion product, something. They always sell fashion products. Yes, they already sell a lot of hair care products. <laughs> <laughs> How is that going to help their problem? Their problem is that they want to make their company into more customized more for the local clients, right? That's the trend these days. So they want to look like a creative and imaginative, innovative company who are customized to individual customers, but they're a big company. And the second thing they want to do is they want to grow in the emerging markets. So what is your action plan to help them to do those things? This one helps them in both of those things. Did you do that before the class? No? Okay. Uh, uh, Julia? Ha Yong Shin. Ha Yong Shin. Yes. I think Laura did the research and development and to local market because Laura wants their luxury image change to very uh, low price brand but high quality. Okay, so what was the name we saw for this? So changing more or em focusing more on uh, luxury but affordable. Yes. So what was the name for this? Affordable luxury. Can you remember? Can anybody remember in the case we saw this name? Luxury brand. Yeah, it's a lux luxury but affordable. Affordable luxury. Low end brand? 
So, uh, Veronica, I think you told us about that park. Can you remember the name? For it's affordable, but it's luxury. Uh, mastige. So, mastige. Mastige for masks. Okay, so you want to develop this more of a mastige product, right? That's going to help you in the emerging markets. Yeah. Because people in the emerging markets are getting more income, uh, but maybe can't afford the very luxury product. So just some people can't, right? Yes. So we can focus on uh, a mastige type of product. Okay, anything else? Uh, you and Simon Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the best the best action plan to Rolia is at first to do M and A or to do joint venture for emerging market to learn local local uh, to learn knowledge of local markets by other companies. Okay. So and also uh, develop the way of marketing plan and uh, internal competitive advantages. A so like this, more research to yes, make their yes. own internal including, advantage. Yeah, including that. Okay, uh, Song Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, study, study about study about consumer group in the same sector, same part. So research consumer groups. Yes. Anybody else? Any other ideas? Action plans, yes? Yeah, for me the basis, uh, what I said, uh, tailoring the product and price. Okay. The market. Okay, and So you mean we can have a more expensive product in one market? Yeah. And a product, lower quality product in another market? Uh, different not maybe price. lower quality, but different quality. Because, for example, I guess Koreans have different skin than someone from Europe, and it should be cheaper in India maybe than in Norway. So you mean price differentiation, the same yeah. quality but just lower pricing? Yeah, but maybe some quality, but different product type. Okay, so continue to make the product type for each country. Okay, anything else? Do you think they can be helped by their brand, L'Oreal? Do you think the brand L'Oreal helps them? Helps their lo if they make a local product? Should it be linked to the global brand of L'Oreal or not? Is that a help? Would you buy a product which you don't know is linked to L'Oreal or you, you know it's linked to L'Oreal? Which one are you more likely to buy? Linked to L'Oreal. Right. So we want to try also to somehow use the global brand. Okay. So we want to use our global brand that we already made so we can have as we said before centralized packaging similar packaging or that kind of thing right with l'oreal uh, name and some mar marketing which also is linked to l'oreal okay like the youtube sites or those kind of thing or the in-store experience also linked to l'oreal so uh, we know that it's linked. Okay. So I think that that's okay. So some problems we could have here is this could cannibalize the higher end brand. Do you understand? Can cannibalize? Are you a cannibal? Yes. You are. Yes. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> what does it mean, cannibal? Eating my friends. Eating people, right? Have you seen the movie Alive? 
It's about an Argentinian rugby team which went to uh, the mountains and they crash in the mountains. They have to eat each other. That's cannibal. Okay. So uh, we talk about cannibalization. What do you think it means? Cannibalizing. What does that mean? So if I make more mastige products, that could cannibalize my luxury products. What does that mean? It means I'm eating my own products. So people start buying this one instead of the luxury product. Okay? Do you understand? This can be some pro problem. If we don't keep the brand separate, first of all, we could have an image problem for the very luxury product. Okay? And second of all, people can start buying this mastige brand instead of the Luxury, very luxury brand. That could be a problem. So we have to think about the trade-off. Is it worth it to do this or not? Okay. Uh, we have to have consistent products uh, without changing too much, so the quality is consistent. So just to sum up, we should have learned from this uh, case about the importance of the local inside insights like doing some even doing research in the local market so we can understand the local market well okay even for creating new products we should have learned a little bit about the digital marketing these days l'oreal is moving more to digital marketing rather than the traditional magazine advertising way we should understand about the brand also making the global brand is important okay and uh, do you have any questions about this case study? No? So, yes? So, in the case, cannibalization also means that, uh, also means threatening themselves, uh, oneself, right? Yes, threatening yourself. Uh -huh. So, for example, in the car industry, Hyundai is selling some luxury car, yes. and then they bring out a mastiche car. Then I was going to buy the luxury car, but the Mastiche car is cheaper, so I'll buy that instead. So they're cannibalizing their luxury product. Instead of buying the luxury product, I bought this one. So the sales can go down for the luxury product. Do you understand? In another, or another product. That's called cannibalization. One of my products goes up, but the other product goes down. Did you get me a gift? No, my parents. Your parents got me a gift? <laughs> That's nice of them to say thank you. Very nice. Sorry. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Teachers today. Teachers. Hmm? Two weeks later. Yes, you're very early. <laughs> very organized. I like organized students. First <laughs> day tomorrow. Next day is tomorrow. Yes. Why are you telling me that? <laughs> I put it in my office. It will look nice next to the window. Two weeks later. Two weeks later, you're going to give me more, more gifts. Our class. Our class. Okay. So, any more questions about uh, this part? Case study? <laughs> so then let's uh, move on to talk about uh, market case research. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so we have to make a decision whether to enter the global market, so we need to assess the market. Will the foreign market people respond favorably to the same products? packaging and promotion as domestic customers. If they do not, how should we customize our product for foreign tastes and requirements? So we find the answer to this question through market research. Okay. Taking into account political, legal, economic, and uh, so on. Uh, so <coughs> market, we're referring to a specific geographic area. So let's have a look at the, this example. So Coca-Cola 
we can, if we don't do our market research properly, we can end up with these kind of problems. So Coca-Cola had to withdraw its two-liter bottle in Spain after discovering that Spain Spanish-owned refrigerators don't have are not large enough. They don't have the compartment of the refrigerator made in Spain is too small for two-liter bottles, so it couldn't fit into the thing, right? Unilever in Japan, they made some capsule that you put in the washing machine. But the Japanese washing machine, the capsule didn't dissolve, so it didn't work. It didn't even work properly inside the washing machine. So we have to think about uh, these kind of things when we uh, go to another market. Another example, General Foods tried to make packaged cake, cake mixes to Japanese consumers. It failed to notice that only 3% of Japanese homes have ovens. Do you think they're kind of silly? Do you understand packaged cakes, mixes? It's some cake mix that you need to cook in an oven, right? Mm -hmm. Then only 3% of Japanese homes have ovens. And there's another cultural factor in Japan, and also in Korea, I noticed, which is that people don't bake cakes at home. In, when I was a kid, my mother baked some cake every two weeks or something like that, right? I was quite spoiled, right? After dinner, she get tea. She gives some cake. Just normal thing. People make cakes, but in Japan or Korea, cakes are kind of for special occasions, like birthdays or that kind of thing, right? Does your mother make cakes at home? No. Do you eat cakes just normally or only on special occasions? Special. Right. So General Foods, they spent millions of dollars introducing this product into Japan, but they didn't do their market research properly. So they ended up with a problem. Okay. Do you know Walmart? Yes. Big US chain store. So they used to supply just T-bone steaks at the meat counter, even though Argentinians prefer the rib and the rump part of the meat. So also in Korea, I think you guys prefer a different type of part of the meat. For example, the chicken. I can't understand. Do you prefer the chicken breast or chicken leg? Chicken legs. Chicken legs. Great students, all chicken legs. Yeah. What about foreign students? Do you prefer yeah. chicken breast or chicken leg? I'm vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I can't understand why. Why do you prefer chicken legs? Very tasty. Huh? No, oh, it's not. <laughs> Most tasty. Most tasty. Most tasty. Yeah. Well, so the meat is grayer. <laughs> the chicken breast meat is more white, and it's better. It's more tasty. <laughs> no, they don't. They have more bones, skin. It's hard to eat. I don't understand. Right? We're from different cultures. So I, I, I can't understand how. Uh, Korean people prefer that, but it's okay because I can eat different parts, right? Here. So the same in Argentina. So also it tried to sell tools and appliances for 110 volt electric power when the standard home voltage in Argentina is 220 volts. So we, what voltage is Korea? What volts do you use? Do you know? 220? In the US, 110, right? So how can they make such simple mistakes? It seems very silly, right? Silly people. Why well, they didn't do the mar market research. But proper market research takes time and money. So companies just in a rush, they introduce their uh, product. Uh, the CEO once said that uh, doing market research slows the new product introduction. Okay? We need to make fast product development. So, he doesn't like market research for innovative products and doesn't like doing it. So, some people think this way, they, they think the speed is more important, so they can make mistakes. So, uh, <coughs> we should do, uh, first of all, find the data through secondary research, such as uh, language, geographic, proximity, economic advancement, and so on. So, then we move on to primary research. So, do you know the difference between secondary research and primary research? Yes. What is the difference? 
first letter is uh, I'm collective real data. Mm. So secondary data is already uh, other people making uh, made the research, yes. which is easier. Hmm? Secondary. Uh, secondary. Okay. So secondary research, uh, we look usually at government databases, private organizations, so on. We'll see later that some companies have better resources than others. The internet helps us with this. Primary research, we do ourselves. It's going to be more specific. We can pay a company to do this, or we can do it ourselves. So if we look here at Exhibit 3, we can see this is the pro nine step process for uh, nine step process for market research. So we make the objective. What do we want? What do we want? Then what information do we need? Think about our needs. Think about the problem. Define the problem. Think about self-reference criteria. What is self-reference criteria? She is uh, my country cultures, and I see other culture. So yes, this SRC is very dangerous uh, criteria. Okay, so I think it's okay because it's okay in my culture, so I don't see any problem. Yes. Okay, eating cakes is normal in the evening time or just in our general life. So. That's not a problem, right? So that's, I have to think about it. Is that a self-reference criterion? That I think eating cakes is just a normal thing, not for special occasions, right? So then we need to decide what unit we are going to use, country, region, global, okay? Examine the data of the secondary research, okay? Is it use, useful or not? Yes or no, right? Assess the value of the research. Is it worth doing some primary research or not? Spending our time. Okay, then we need to design the research. We can do different type of primary data collection. We're going to talk about later. Survey, questionnaire, so on. Okay? And uh, we analyze our data and interpret our results. Okay, so we saw when we did the case study, we we're seeing something similar, right? What is our problem? Okay, exactly what is our problem? That's important. If we get wrong at the start, what is our problem? The whole, we're going to waste our time. So we have to be clear about what our problem is. Then we get our information. Just like in the case study, we get our information. Okay, then we analyze the information and we make some action plan interpret and make some action plan, okay, about uh, what we need to do. So, <clears throat> what is marketing research? It's gathering, recording, analyzing data to provide the information so that we can make action plans, okay? And make the right decisions. So, it's not as easy in the international scope as in the uh, national scope, okay? First of all, one obvious example is language. We have to translate our questions into the other language. Sometimes it doesn't translate well. Answers have to be put in a way that we can understand. So we talked about this. So we, we can find out of all of these things. So somebody give me an example. What kind of thing can we find out about economics and demo demography? What kind of question would we ask under here? Economic systems, economic situation, present Yes, so give me an example. What kind of data? GDP. GDP per head capita, right. What about cultural, social, political? Kind of data. We could check with Hofstede's uh, study, right? Overview of market conditions. So market conditions. 
yes. Uh, how difficult that is to establish a department or or company. Okay, is it hard to set up a company and so on? Number four, summary of the technological environment. What kind of data would we find there? The infrastructure, the local Infrastructure, roads, or internet access, right? How many people have internet access in the country? Competitive situation? What kind of data would we find there? The number of companies related to, related to the industry. And the number of companies and their size of revenues in that industry, right? So where can we find those kind of things? Where can we find that kind of information? The internet. The internet. Yes. Other areas. Right? We can pay. Sometimes we can pay a company. Which country do you think has the best information for market research? America. The United States, right? Yes. The United States has the best information uh, for that kind of area. It's the easiest to find that. So this is a, a, just a, a research process. We just we talked about it. We define the problem, find the information, consider if it's worth doing it or not, gather the data, analyze the data, and make our action plan. So what kind of problem can we have in defining the problem and the research uh, definition? So we can have some amb ambiguous business problem means it's not very clear what the problem is. And we need to make this into a research objective. So when we are researching, we need to have a clear objective, what we want to research. So we said this is more critical, very critical anyway, to find the problem, but more critical in foreign markets, foreign markets, because we have unfamiliar environment. So it can make defining the problem even harder. Okay, we can also, uh, so we said, for example, in this, we gave the three examples before about Coca Cola, right? So in Coca Cola, they couldn't sell the two liter bottle because the two liter bottle was too big for the fridge in Spain. Okay, so our problem would change from how to sell a lot of coke, right, then maybe we're going to change to selling cans or small bottles of coke in Spain. So also we have to establish the limits broad enough to include all relevant variables. So we saw Barbie did it, made this mistake we mentioned before. Okay, Barbie just assumed that all the countries want to buy the blonde doll. Okay, so they didn't think about uh, the possibility that uh, other people would come in, and we said self-reference criteria. Also, when we're defining the problem, we have to think about that. So, then the next step is getting our data, secondary data. So the US government has a lot of statistics for the United States. So if we can go online, we can find uh, data which is not matched in other countries. They have a lot of data, good quality data. Japan also has good quality data, other European countries to do that, some mainly the developed countries. Uh, the UN and the OECD are working with countries to improve uh, data selection. So the US has some government agencies that work on this and they make this, put this information together. So these other countries don't have as many government agencies to work in this area. Another problem here is language skill, right? You want to, you're analyzing the German market. Is there anybody here who who's, has a country for their final project which is not English speaking country? Yes, what country? Norway. Norway, okay. So do you think Norway has a lot of information in English or not? Yes, everything. Norway has a lot. Of, is Norway is one of the their language originally was similar to English, right? So it's quite similar. Okay. So 
I want to collect information, I might need to get a native speaker, hire a native speaker. Official statistics are sometimes very optimistic. Argentina was in trouble with the IMF because Argentina was reporting its inflation as 10%. But the IMF said, no, your inflation is 20%. Right? So some countries, they don't want to report exactly the information. So just generally, <coughs> the statistics can be too optimistic, reflecting the national pride rather than reality. Okay? Also, tax collecting can affect the data. Uh, some companies won't report their revenues in one country, they'll report it in another country to save tax. They shouldn't do that, but it happens. Less developed countries, more prone to optimism or also errors or adjusted reporting like we talked about with Argentina and Greece. One of the reasons for Greece's financial crisis was they didn't report a lot of their debt, official debt figures, right? So you started a new business in Greece and then Greece has the crisis because the government didn't report its debt figures properly, right? Then you have a problem. So you just should be aware that Cross-checking is always good in the secondary data. Cross-checking means checking more than one source. So we don't just take the Argentinian government or the Greek government, we also listen to the OIS, IMF or another organization. So uh, data can also have other problems. It could be years out of date, could be collected infrequently or unpredictably. The, broad, the categories can be different much too broad or very vague. Product categories, every product in the US has a number. Okay? 54362, customized furniture. Okay? 54361, uh, just regular furniture. Okay? So, every country has a different way of listing the products and their numbers. So, the categories might not match up between different countries. So, an example here is supermarket. Do you have supermarkets in Korea? What is a supermarket in Korea? Not a supermarket? Home Plus. Home Plus? Yes. Okay, so a supermarket in Korea is similar enough to a supermarket in the UK. It's a place where you buy a lot of groceries and food and so on, right? But in different countries, supermarket has a different meaning, or they don't have that type of store. They have a different type of store. Okay, even in the US, they tend to have bigger, much bigger, uh, like Walmart, almost like hypermarket, right? So we have to, if it's hard between different countries to make one category for businesses sometimes. So just be aware of that. We have to judge is this data reliable? Who collected the data? Is it possible they had some reason to misrepresent the facts? Why did they collect the data? How did they collect the data? Is it consistent and logical? Check, cross-check with other things. Okay. So we say here, uh, we can check it with another, another data is better. So as the country is more economically developed, they have better data. Okay, so what do you think about your country that you chose? Do you think they will have good data for marketing research or not? What country did you guys choose? USA. The USA? UK. 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 Okay. They should have good data. So getting the primary data, this is data collected specifically for this particular research project. It's very often that you have a product there's not a, it might, if, especially if you're selling business to business, it might be a very big market, right? And it might be very specific. So there, other people might have done research on that area. Okay. For example, if you're selling cars, it's easy. There's going to be a lot of market research on selling cars. But let's say that you're selling some part of an electronic equipment, right? Maybe not a lot of people did research on that before. So you have to decide how to do the research. Okay? So you have to go and do, first of all you can do quantitative research. Does anybody know the difference between qualitative and quantitative research? 
what is the difference between qualitative and quantitative research? We see that and we don't see that. We see it and we don't see it? Because qualitative mm -hmm. is human mind mm -hmm. emotion. Yes. But quantitative is the I research people's habit and something else. Okay, so you're generally right, right? We talked about it in the case study, it's the same idea. Okay? So for quantitative research, because we're using numbers, we need a large number to make it statistically correct. Okay? Usually we ask them a kind of a questionnaire where they can only answer yes or no. Right? Or choose one, two, three, or four. So we can use the number, we can compare and use numbers. Hmm? Yes, a survey, but we use like yes, no questions or uh, uh, multiple choice. So we can make some percentage uh, numbers. We summarize the result in percentages, average or other statistics. So qualitative research, open-ended questions. We're going to look at an example in a minute of uh, Questionnaires, right? We'll see the difference between closed question and open-ended question. Okay? We need unstructured responses. So we don't give people a structure. We let them talk. We want to know their ideas and their feelings. And uh, it kind of interprets people. So uh, this can help us to understand the cultural factors, behavioral factors, and so on. So, uh, let's have a look at some examples of uh, this. So on the web page we have here primary market research techniques and also we have a sample of interview. Have you ever done, has anybody ever done any primary research before? Yes? Can you tell us about it? Every time we're writing a report in our yeah. university. Mm. We must do market research every time we have an assignment or project or stuff like that. So we try to call it to the yeah. Talking to people, surveys. Can you give us an example of one time that you did that? Uh, do you mean interviewing or in store? Um, for example, okay. I had my internship for an event company, mm -hmm. and uh, when after the event, I was making a questionnaire for the people to ask if they were satisfied and what would they change, and then we're spreading it on the internet, on Facebook and social media, so people could answer like if they like it or not. And I do beer market research here in Korea, so I go to uh, stores like Latte Mart or GS and. I check the prices, packaging and stuff, or also to pubs and restaurants and stuff like that. So you go out and check your stuff? Yeah, and I do it for company and check the company. And also for other people, we cooperate with the company, then we interview with the company and all the yeah. employees okay. to ask their, like, what we have to research, so we ask them questions. Or we simply go in the streets and just talk people and talk to them. Yes. So it's nice in Ireland or Denmark, they're quite small countries. Uh, with low power distance, so it's, students can make a uh, relationship with the companies, right? In Korea, it's a little bit more confidential and higher power distance. I have a friend who works in global marketing in Samsung. I asked him to allow the students to visit or even come here to talk, but he said that his boss told him he's not allowed to do anything with the university. He's, they have a, a condition like that, right? Rule for the employees, confidentiality thing. They're not allowed to do that. So, just a little bit different uh, culture, right? So, <coughs> these are the commonly used primary research techniques. Uh, techniques like focus groups and one to one interviews. So, you guys did one to one interviews. What is a focus group? Do you understand focus group? What is that? Yeah, so we select a group and we ask them some questions, right? 
in a group, that kind of thing. So these are qualitative research, small uh, and less structured. Okay? So we find out about people's attitudes and ideas. Okay? So we don't really write down numbers, we just write down opinions that we found. Usually when we make a questionnaire or a survey, that's more quantitative research. We have more people. We wait outside the supermarket or we give it to all the students. Okay? And so these are the ways usually we do this. One-to-one -one interview, telephone interview, questionnaire, response and reply card, web feedback, focus groups. So have you done any of these things? No, I mean not given them, have you replied to these things? Have you been the subject of research? Which ones have you been the subject of? Yes. Yeah, telephone interview. Telephone interview. The question is, uh, which are you most likely to respond to? Questionnaires. Questionnaires. Telephone interviews. Okay. So uh, let's take a break now. Ten minutes.